Okay, so my first ever YouTube video was five tips for a successful bulk. Um, and that has done the best out of all my videos between um, views, likes, and I think even comments. It's done the best. So today I am going to be bringing you five tips for a successful... Damn! I can't restart anymore. It just won't work for a successful cut. Okay, that is what I am trying to say. Um, so I have cut before and as of right now I'm bulking. Um, cutting was more of going from like fat to skinny straight up. Um, so I'm going to give you the five tips that I can think of off the bat. Um, that's how I feel like I do these videos best. The five things that come into mind first because it makes me feel as though those are most important um, to me. So we'll run through them. I'll tell you why I think they're important and hopefully I can help you in some way. If you guys enjoy, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, share the video, all that good stuff. Um, so first things first is protein. Um, and these are in no specific order. Protein um, is on this list because when you eat foods with um, lots of protein, when you eat protein filled foods, you typically are more filled than if you were eating foods without protein. Protein fills you up. So if you're on a cut, then when you think of cut, you typically think of less calories, not exactly low calories. Some people might consider it to be low calories, but when you think of a cut, I think everybody thinks of less calories because that's what it is. Um, less calories than normal. So protein will allow you to feel fuller um, longer so that those less calories aren't really as much of an issue as they would have been if you were not consuming enough protein. So I recommend at least a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Everybody has a slight different tweak in what they recommend, um, but everybody is relatively close to what I would say, which is a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, so stay fuller longer and it should make your cut easier um, overall. Number two is sleep. Um, and sleep for two reasons. One, sleep is good for overall health. So sleep for multiple reasons actually, and I'll get through all of them um, super quickly. Sleep is good for overall health, but you know, we're talking about cutting. So if you like health then sleep, but anyways, um, the more you sleep, the more you'll recover and the better you'll perform, you'll, you will perform in the gym. Um, and the better you perform in the gym, then the more of a successful cut you will have. Um, the more you sleep, the more muscle you will build. The more muscle you build, the more calories you will burn while you are at rest, which will also lead to a successful cut. Um, and then third, the more you sleep, and I'm not saying sleep all day so you don't have to eat, what I'm saying is as long as you are getting a good recommended amount of sleep, whatever's good for you or whatever you seem to think is the recommended amount, um, then you will not have the tendency to eat because who sleeps and thinks about eating? Um, well, I mean, I guess you can, but you're not physically going to get up and sleepwalk and go eat. Maybe you are, right? I don't know. Um, but all I'm trying to say here is if you're sleeping, you're probably not going to be worrying about food too much. Um, and the extra calories won't be there. Um, number three is going to be water. Water for a couple of reasons, just like sleep. Water is important for overall health, like I said about sleep. Um, so if you like overall overall health, drink water. Um, but two, something I like to say that not a lot of people always say, water helps flush out the uh, toxins in your body and it might make you um, feel better, feel leaner, appear leaner, um, and that will give you the confidence to want to continue. Um, it's also been proven to help with fat loss. Um, and most importantly, the idea I had when I originally wrote this down before I thought of anything else was that it will uh, kind of serve as a filler. So um, I'm not saying if you're hungry, drink water and don't eat. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is sometimes when people have already hit their calories for the day, it's 11 o'clock at night and they're like, damn, I'm hungry. They're not actually hungry. They can just go drink some water and they realize that they really just needed something to sit in their stomach. So water, as long as you're drinking it periodically throughout the day, some people like to drink water before their meals so that they eat less, but that's not really the case for me because I eat everything I put in front of me anyway because I've already tracked it before it's even in front of me. Um, but water can help in multiple ways. It can keep you full during the day and it could be a saver if you are hungry later on in the day. 
Um, number four is non-calorie dense foods, AKA foods that you can eat a lot of for less calories versus calorie dense foods, things like peanut butter and nuts where you can only eat a small amount for a large amount of calories or larger. Um, forget that. So non-calorie dense foods, things like, and I don't say this in a scary way, but things like salad, things like oats, things like fruit, things like vegetables, um, lean meats, stuff like that. Stuff that you can eat a lot of for low calories so that you can still stay within your calorie needs for the day, but you can fill yourself up, fuel yourself, get your protein in, get your macro and micronutrients in, all of the above. Low calorie dense foods will save you, especially if I'm working with somebody right now, he's shorter, so um, even though he's heavier, he typically eats less because he's a shorter person. But if you have an appetite, well, then those th two things kind of don't go together. You're like, well, I'm shorter, so I can't really eat as much as other people, but I have an appetite that most people don't have. Um, low calorie dense foods are your, your go-to. They're your savior here. Um, they will keep you full and they will allow you to get all that good stuff that I just mentioned in without having to worry about going over your calories and feeling guilty. And number five, um, I was gonna say an arguably the most important, but these are all equally important. Really not, nothing is over um, one another, but this thing kind of allows more and I'll explain. Moving. Um, so the more you move, whether that's cardio in the gym, the treadmill, or whether um, if you have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, getting 10,000, um, I believe that's like the basis. Some people like 15,000. I think my mom even set her goal to 20,000 at one point, um, steps per day. Um, however, it might be going to play basketball with your friends, riding a bike in the park with your family, whatever it might be. If you are moving, you are burning calories and that will allow you to eat more rather than you sitting on a couch with your Fitbit on and it's saying you have a thousand steps and you have 2000 calories to eat for the day and that's it. And don't get me wrong, I am not saying that you should eat back the calories that you burn to the exact T because I, I, it's a very debatable subject, but a big large majority of the people say no. Um, in fact, everybody says no when it comes to cutting because if you eat back the calories that you burned, then you would be eating at maintenance. Um, but it's a confusing thing. It's a debatable subject when it comes to eating at maintenance. When it comes to cutting, you shouldn't eat back the calories that you um, had burned off because then you would be eating at maintenance, not a deficit, and therefore you wouldn't be cutting anymore. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, if you'd like to free up some space and be able to eat more, not everything that you burned, but more, eat some of what you burned so that you're able to eat more food and fill yourself more um then moving more will allow you to do so um like i said whether it's in the gym the treadmill the elliptical the stairmaster um or whether it's a walk in the park whether it's walking around your block to get those steps in on your fitbit your apple watch whatever it may be moving more will ultimately allow you to eat more but like i said just make sure you're not eating everything that you burn back because then you would be eating at maintenance and you're no longer cutting um, but if you want to free up some space and use some of what you burned, then that is what we're implying here. Um, so this has been my five tips for cutting. If this helped you in any way, uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on post notifications. I know that this was kind of confusing and all over the place. Um, however, I try my best and you guys tend to like these media you type videos. Um, I didn't think you would like these media you type videos but you guys tend to like me sitting down and talking to you about something. But you guys know me, I don't like to ramble on for too long. So if you could just do anything that I mentioned just a few seconds ago to support me, boost the algorithm, it would be greatly appreciated. If you guys have any other video ideas, um, go ahead and drop them down below. I listened to them. Somebody commented on my video two times ago and the next video I did what he had recommended because I want to give you guys what you want.